Hey everybody, Richard Hart here. Called the Bitcoin top of the day for what, two years ago now? Something like that. Told you, not your keys, not your coins. Told you trading was death. Invented good ideas like if you have to fiat on ramp, only do a little tiny bit at a time so they can only screw you for your last send. Um, invented a product that went up 10,000 fold, 623 days. This performed flawlessly for over a thousand days and is something like half the age of Ethereum now. It was given away for free, too. Directly solves the problem of generating yield by holding your own keys. Um, yeah, I told everybody trading's death, and then most of these failures come from trading failing. So uh, these guys get a big stack of money from idiots. They go and pick up pennies in front of freight trains and Send their coins, because they have a nice story. Oh, give us one coin now. We'll give you 1.08 coins in a year. So stupid. For a, a 0.08x profit, you're going to go and uh, risk your whole stack. Hilarious. When crypto goes up multiples all the time. And you're going to risk your whole stack for like 7 or 8%. Wildly stupid. <clears throat> you know, it's funny. Do you hear about Richard Hart getting rug pulled? No, you don't. Do you hear about Vitalik getting rug pulled? No. Nope. Do you see Vitalik's wa you know, wallet doing stupid things? No, nope. just sits in ETH. Oh, interesting. Well, pretty hard for him to, uh, to get scammed when he's just sitting in a real cryptocurrency. So real cryptocurrency solves all these problems that uh, people are forcing to happen. You know, if idiots didn't send this uh, this jerk off Sam Bankman Freed uh, their money, then he wouldn't be able to steal it. And if idiots wouldn't be margin trading or trading, they wouldn't have any reason to send their coins there. You know, the only exception to that is if you really need a fiat on ramp, if you need a fiat on or off. And uh, here's the funny part: the solution to that is for laws to get better. Why can't you just buy your neighbor's crypto? Because he's afraid of going to jail for a money transmitter license. Is that reasonable? Is that good? Is that smart? No, probably not. You know, and so the government has made having an exchange uh, so onerous and hard to do that uh, you have very few choices available to you, and those choices quite often are terrible and still air money. So, once again, my community, the Hexicans, the Pulsicans, they've uh, been shielded by and large from these huge massive failures. Hey, when FTX ran off with all those uh, coins. Was Hex listed on their exchange? No. Well, then they didn't steal any Hex, did they? Well, that's nice. And when Voyager ran off with all the customers' funds and went bankrupt, oh, did the did, did any Hex get lost? No, nope. because they didn't deal with Hex. And when all these scumbag middlemen maggots go out of business and steal everyone's money or otherwise go bankrupt or have whatever their little scam problem is that they're having, Hexkins aren't affected because we aren't in that scam ecosystem. We don't have uh, people feeding people into the meat grinder of margin trading. People feeding people into the meat grinder of centralized exchanges. We don't, we don't have people, you know, feeding uh, our team into the meat grinder. But all these other guys do, you know. So there was, a, there was a hater that I literally brought to tears with a single tweet. He tweeted, oh, you know, why everyone, everyone lost all this money. Where'd the money go? <laughs> and I just commented like, hi there. In the uh, in the channel, and uh, the dude just like burst into tears. He uh, he couldn't handle it. He's like, "We built all this technology, and, and scammers take advantage of it." Because they think I'm a scammer, which is hilarious. Because I've never had Sam Bankman Freed on my channel. I've never said nice things about the guy, other than say that he sent fifty grand to the the same charity that I support, the Sense Foundation, because Vitalik basically made him. Um, and then like. And I, and I tell the truth. I'm like, this guy's doing e-gaming to get kids addicted to margin trading. And, uh, you know, he's giving back 1%. Like, he's doing 10 units of harm and then giving back, like, 1%. Oh, cool. Well, you're still net harm, dude. It's terrible. So, I was right about everything. I was right about trading. I was right about centralized counterparties. I designed a product that specifically solves the problem that everyone's facing, where they want to generate yield without counterparty risk. I generated a product that generates yield without counterparty risk. I won the game in every possible way that the game could be won. And uh, I'm nearly tired of patting myself on the back. Like, I've said so many 
cogent and compelling things on live streams that I can barely even like find all the clips because I've just been right for so many years. I've been preaching self custody, not your keys, not your coins, counterparty risk elimination, censorship resistance. I've been preaching these things forever. For as long as anyone's been able to hear my voice, I've been preaching these things. And people ignore my good advice and they lose all their money and they cry and whine like little bitches. And it's really sad because if they would just listen, if they would just listen, they could be saved. I write free self-help books. Do they read them? Nope. I give away free coins. Hex was free. Did they claim that for free? No, most people didn't. I live in a world of idiots and I do everything I can to try and bring them up higher to raise their standards of life. And I'm willing to dress like a clown and act stupid to get attention in order to try and save these people. And at some point, I would really demand my respect. How many people have gone head to head to me and lost? Mashinsky went head to head with me. He's bankrupt. SPF, bankrupt. Three Rose Capital, bankrupt. These guys, uh, these uh, bankless guys, some podcast guys, literally crying because I won so hard and their team lost because they fed their team into the meat grinder and they promoted and advertised all this crap. Peter McCormick advertised all this crap, put his users in it, got his users fed to the meat grinder. So there's one guy in this entire space that's really looking out for you. And by the way, people act like CZs, you know, great guy. Yeah, well, he gets people to sign up for margin trading. I know people that are still at money that he's never paid. And uh, good luck serving him a lawsuit. Good luck. Because he bought CoinMarketCap, and CoinMarketCap lies about Hex every single day. Some hackers got together to try and sue him. Just can't seem to find him. So I, uh, I'm in an ecosystem in a space full of scumbags doing scummy things, jacking people for money all the time. And uh, I should be treated like a god here, basically. Called the top on the day, give away free coins, give away free self-help books, teach you to drink less, gamble less, trade less, have better relationships, give better apologies, be a better friend. How dare anyone say a crossword? Ever. They should kneel. They should kneel and kiss the ring, and their lives could be better for it. So I'm looking down at this list here at some people. Oh, and by the way, why am I in my own chat room here? Because dum dums and other chat rooms don't give me the mic. And then what? I'm going to feed my users to go hear about Dogecoin. Dogecoin sucks. It sucks balls. It's terrible. It's trash. Why, why would I want my users to be involved with it? If you don't have, by the way, as far as your coins go, if your coin doesn't have Ethereum virtual machine or otherwise smart contract functionality, then all of your users are forever going to get screwed by having to use centralized exchanges to get in and out. A lot of people like to trade one coin for another. A lot of people like to trade to stable. If you have on-chain exchange, it is a huge deal that removes counterparty risk that makes everyone's lives better. And you're not going to get that on a chain that doesn't have smart contracts. So you're going to suck middleman D forever. You're in Bitcoin, suck that middleman D. You're in Dogecoin, go ahead. Wet your lips and start sucking middleman D. Get them furry balls right on your chin. The only way you can stop sucking middleman D in crypto, or at least try to, is with on-chain exchange, no counterparty risk, just you and the contract, you run the code. Now, if you're, if you're going to stable, you still have some counterparty risk. USDC can just invalidate your stable. USDT can just invalidate your stable. DAI can't, so that's nice. But even in the case of DAI, DAI is collateralized with USDC and USDT, and therefore, if they have problems, DAI will have problems too. Unfortunate, but better than counterparty risk probably, right? Like better than SBF, FTX, just jacking all your money, or Celsius, or BlockFi, or whoever the next one to fall is. Apparently, the only one that hasn't fallen yet is Nexo, but since everyone else died, everyone that has a brain probably assumes that that one's going to die too. Now, what's the solution? Uh, Hex.com, generate your own yield. Hold your own keys. No counterparty risk. Where's the money come from? It comes from inflation, just like the yield at your bank and just like the yield as a Bitcoin miner. Oh, but, but where does the money come from? It's virtual lending. The people that lock their coins add value, and the only people that can harvest are the people that don't lock their coins. But the people that don't lock their coins are diluted over time. And so it's like a perfectly running system that's been running for over a thousand days, about half the time Ethereum's existed. And uh, 
I still just beat these idiots that don't understand it. It's just Bitcoin with a proof of work change. Instead of getting paid inflation to blow up the environment, you get paid inflation to pump up the price. That's it. That's great. <laughs> it's like, you know what? Your 401k has preferential tax treatment in the United States to get you to delay gratification. Oh, well, it seems like the government's pretty cool with this idea. This time deposit at your bank pays you extra to delay gratification. Oh, this seems like a pretty widely well-held idea in finance. Oh, you have vesting periods in stocks where you have to hold them so long before you can sell them. Oh, look, this works in the real world. Why don't we put it on the blockchain? That's what it did. Put it on the blockchain. Bitcoin hash rate defends Bitcoin network. Hex uh, amount of stake coins defends hex price. It's just a different network, network mechanic. Anyway, let's have some other speakers in here. They cover everything? Oh, yeah, proof of reserves. You, proof of reserves doesn't do anything. You can encumber the funds. So if you have a centralized exchange and you have a big wallet with a trillion dollars in it, you can go get a loan against your trillion dollar stuff because you have the ability to give it to the person if you default on the loan. And so you can encumber on-chain assets with off-chain actions if there's a centralized actor. DeFi doesn't have this problem because there's no centralized actor. Real DeFi, a lot of fake DeFi. If it has an Oracle, it's fake. If it has admin keys, it's fake. Um, if they don't do a time with average price on margin trading, fake. There's a, there's a lot of fake DeFi out there. If there's not multiple front ends, fake. So, you know, Hex is real DeFi. Uniswap V1 is real DeFi. No admin keys, no counterparty risk. You know, amazing. So, Proof of Reserves is a little bit better than not having them. So it doesn't, it doesn't stop people from encumbering the funds and basically stealing all the value of them. But if you have Proof of Reserves, at least you know you might maybe get paid. But if you can't even show the Proof of the Reserve, you know you're not getting paid. So it's not perfect, but it is definitely better. Oh, so summary. I was right about everything. Everything wrong. Everyone else was wrong about everything. They promoted the scumbags. They profited from the scumbags. They fed you to the meat grinder, and now they pretend like they're the victim. Nope. They're the guys that profited in your horror. They're the ones that got paid affiliate commissions to feed you into the meat grinder and destroy your life. And they're still out there doing it right now. So, and then they won't stop because it's in their financial interest not to stop. Whereas it's in my financial interest to protect my people. I want my people to do well. And so I don't want to see you guys get fed into the meat grinder, and I want to protect you and save you and do everything I can to try and help you. Which is why for half a decade, I've been giving you free, wonderful, amazing advice that has saved probably a lot of lives. All right, I'm going to pick up some hands, so if you want to talk, let's see what we got here. Approve. All right, we got one speaker. Oh, I can invite a co-host. This usually breaks the space, so who's my co-host going to be? If you want, Richard, I can co-host if you want. I'm used to it. Okay. What was your username? Famous? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll invite co-host Famous. Got it. Hope it works. Even Elon had his chat break. It was so it was so crap that it's like Elon. Yeah, it's, it, it's broken. It breaks all the time. People can't hear each other. Huh. So. So like I, sometimes we're just gonna have to mute the room and tell people to come in and out because sometimes they might not hear each other. It's so sad that Elon went on streams and literally was like, "I'm not an expert in crypto." Doge to the moon. That's what he said. Literally one after the other, in reverse order though. He said Doge to the moon first, and then I'm not an expert in crypto second. You know, for guys not an expert in crypto, maybe bro, you should listen to me, okay? Because you're wrong on a couple things. Cars, you're doing good. Rockets, you're doing good. Uh, busting loads and checks, making babies. You're doing great, dude. But crypto, you're not doing great. Doge is always going to suck. It's not good tech. Stop. We have way better tech. Ethereum's way better tech. Pulse Chain's way better tech. Hex is way better tech. Oh, you want to you want to de-risk in Doge Chain? Start sucking middleman D to get into a stable. Good luck. You want to de-risk in Hex? Well, just go on Uswap. Go on East Hex. Go on One Inch. Go on Match it at XYZ. Go wherever you want. On chain. Trustless, no counterparty risk. It's so much, so much better. Um, it's sad to see a technologist uh, promote wildly inferior technology and think it's funny. It's not funny, dude. It's trash. Stop. He's wrong about longevity too. He's like, oh, we're all gonna die. You know, it's just a matter of when. So, like, I, I don't want people to live much longer. 
yeah, dude, you don't want Alexander Graham Bell and Thomas Edison and Albert Einstein to still be alive right now? You're dumb, dude. Those guys would be killing it. We'd have new new industries you never thought possible. It's a tragedy that the people that are the best at what they do in this world die and just become worm food when they could still be doing great work. And particularly when we have a universe that's empty, right? So, like, do we really have a pot? And how, it's so funny to me. The guy that promotes that we don't have a population problem, Elon Musk, is also the guy that doesn't want you to live longer. So you're like, you want more people? Hey, man, <laughs> have them stop rotting and turning into crap people and then dying so quickly. Like, I don't know why people get this one so wrong. So he's wrong about longevity. He's wrong about crypto. He's okay in cars. He's okay in rockets. <clears throat> it's too bad I couldn't share those ideas with him because instead they started talking about everything that doesn't solve the FTX problem. Dutch Wind doesn't solve FTX. DeFi solves FTX. And who made DeFi popular? Me. Who carried Uniswap on their back? Me. Who's the reason you've heard of Uniswap? Me. And do I get the credit? Do I get the millions of followers? No, the scammers get them. SBF gets the followers. The dude from Three Rose Capital gets the followers. But not Richard, the guy that's always right. The hero. The guy that made the 10,000x coin that gave it away for free. Not Richard, the self-help author. <laughs> the scumbag scammers, they get the credit. It's just amazing to me. It's funny how they're copying you now. Not your keys, not your coins. You know, they're, they're, they're it's, it's it's a fucking joke. But it's okay, man. They'll get what they deserve with time. Yeah, you know, it's fine. Well, that's all I wanted to say. I mean, uh, if you want to approve some people to talk or whatever, I don't feel like managing this space. Well, that, I was wondering you. what you wanted to do. Yeah. You know, let's give some place, let's give people an hour or two to hang out somewhere, this space, that's not this shill infested trash that's the other space. Like, I don't feel like anyone hearing about NFTs and Doge and other stupid bullshit. Like, look, there was a, a horrible financial tragedy, so now we're going to show you other stuff that sucks that you can get wrecked on. Mm, no, 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 thank you. Um, I would like to ask you a question. Good. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm debating if <laughs> if I'm going to get a good answer out of it. But, Give it a shot. Uh, obviously, you know, la last time, um, you know, you, you mentioned about the uh, about a coin that you might not need or need, and you're not very worried about it, which is the incentivized token for the Pulse X DAP. I was just wondering if any any idea or um, creativity came out of that after all this time. If or it has liquidity, if it has liquidity, and you earn it from doing something else then people will do the something else to earn the money. And so you don't need to Rube Goldberg machine it. You just have to like, someone has to put money in it basically. Does that make sense to you? A hundred percent. Like if you're, if you're on sushi swap and you want to like, you know, put liquidity for something and then you earn some extra thing, like you don't need to, it, you don't, I don't, I don't want to put, sick tokenomics into the token I don't care about. I don't. Be, I'd rather I put sick tokenomics into the tokens I do care about. So of all the tokens in the world, the one I care about least is all the ones I didn't found. And then of the ones I did found, like the incentive token I care the least about. Well, could you give because, the like, reward? Let me put it to you this way. Reward, dude, what if there was no incentive could... token? Then you just make your fucking profit from normal yield farming on what's likely to be less volatile pairs because it's the same code on a different chain. So it should be, like, they should kind of trade next to each other, I assume. Like, there's a lot of guesses, right? So, like, what do you think is going to move more? Like, USDC versus Ethereum? That's going to move a lot. It's, like, down 80%. Then it was, like, up 60x after the COVID dip. So, like, up 60x, that's a lot. Do you think, like, the Pulse Chain pair, Ethereum pair, like, like E-Link, P-Link? Not that, I mean, like, Link and E-Link. So... Link on the Ethereum network and link on the Pulse Chain network. Do you think they're really going to go up and down versus each other 60x? We know Ethereum USDC will, but do you think E Link and P Link will? And I don't, I don't want to call P Link because it's really we're just going to call it Link on the Pulse Chain network. But like, I think there's going to be less volatility on the Ethereum Pulse pairs. No, obviously, look, there's, there's so many pairs. I'm sure some will be absolutely crazy, but. For like big ones, the liquidity, it, it just seems to me like it feels like they should kind of move with each other and then you should have less some permanent loss. More like a stable, stable pair, like in theory. It's like stable, stable pairs, unless one fails, they should trade at parity basically. 
And then all the fees you get are just basically, you know, like free money. But I tell, I warn people that it's not free money because if one fails and they can, the market will take all your good ones and give you all the bad ones. You'll be very sad because you've lost all your money. So, I don't, you know, there's risk in yield farming. I don't want anyone to think that there's not. I completely understand. I was, I was just thinking like, because what you do with the, you know, the, the, Paul sex buyback where you're taking whatever fees are generating the 0.03% and you're generating and buying it back and taking it to something. Well, I, ha I was wondering if does the incentive for the liquidity providing, because most probably the people that provide liquidity are the, totally are, unrelated are there, right? Could it, could it be something that's bought into? So like that, that selling off of it is not negative. Whereas you always have it buying it. Therefore, even if someone sells it off, no, there's no such, there's no perpetual motion machine. Anything that is buyable that makes the price go up is sellable and makes the price go down. And there's literally no way around that. So, okay. I, don't, I don't know why everyone cares so much about the incentive token. The liquidity locusts come and they give you the liquidity to yield farm your coin and then they dump the crap out of it and then they wait for the next thing to come along and then they go liquidity locust that thing. So, like, but that's usually because the token that's provided has no other utility. But what if we were to put a, a coin that then has you'd be, Then you'd be starving utility from one that you didn't give to the yield farming locusts. So well, stay, save that? the good game theory ideas for not giving it to the locusts. Uh, okay. But what if the major players are incentivized to have an asset that they want that they could go ahead and delay their gratification? If you want to, if you want to post your game theory ideas in the Pulse Plan channel, like go ahead. But I just... I don't... I that's why I didn't want to. Bring I care up. about Pulse Chain, care about Pulse X, care about Hex. I don't give a shit oh, about we, the incentive token. We, we if really people make money that. on it. Congrats. Hundred percent. No, because how do you how do you not make money on it? Like you're going to get it for free. There's no other way to get it than to get it for free. Kind of. So like, I don't see how anyone's going to lose on that one. But you know, I'm a little bit tired. So don't like. like I have to be careful with all these like forward-looking statements and price statements and stuff. I'm not an oracle. I'm guessing. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not your lawyer. I'm not your accountant. You know, I'm just making guesses. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you for answering my question. My pleasure. So since well, all you guys want to ask one pulse chain, I don't know, dude, as soon as it's ready, they're working on it. There's been a lot of movement in the, uh, the uh, GitLab, so... Yeah, the, the GitLab stuff excites me. Yep. But, uh, I was when you see V3 about... test now come out, you can be more excited. Indeed. Yep. Um, but if people care about so much about the incentive token, like, you know, you can you can build on it. Like, that's the beauty of like, DeFi why do I why, Listen, stuff. why do I want to incentivize you to provide yield, like, yield farm instead of just, like, getting hex? Why would I do that? Like, yield farming never has as good returns as hex so far historically so like why would i why would i break my balls to get you to do something inefficient i think it's stupid so like you have to understand your ability to generate revenue by like putting tokens in different place on the richard hart invented ecosystem is like crazy you could get hacks and lock it on the ethereum chain you can get hacks and lock it on the pulse chain you can get hacks and put it in the hex usdc pair on ethereum you can get hacks and put it on the PulseX, uh, Bridgeton USDC pair on Pulse Chain. You could put it. Um, you, you could take Pulse and uh, and lock it up itself and generate yield there. So like, and not all of these are going to pay the same. They're going to have different risk profiles and different rewards, and I'm sure some of them are going to be wildly better than others. And so like, I, I don't I don't think it's useful to just try and max out and get people in to yield farming because i don't think yield farming does as well as hex like systematically yield farmers don't yeah. get rich dude like in general i 100 percent agree with you you know i don't always understand why people are so like of all the things to have questions about the yield token always seems to be like or not, the incentive token always seems to be like the one thing everyone wants to know about and i think yeah. it's one of the most least interesting pieces that, it's the least interesting thing dude I, I, I just, it, I don't, it's a duct taped on shitcoin. So you're like, cool, duct taped on shitcoin, great. 
That's what it is. People want it because it'll have a value. But other than that, fuck it. I got a question for you. Of um, obviously, what's in the news? Like central exchanges are the problem, but they're not going away. So, if they're gonna be better, and we're gonna learn from this, do you see like on-chain hybrids or exchanges start using DeFi, or like, do you see anything getting slightly better, other than I just? Mean... I don't know, dude. Shouldn't banks just sell you crypto by now? They're allowed to. They're literally allowed to. But they just don't. It's an inefficient be world. Cool. I mean, a lot of times you have to just solve these fucking things yourself. So you, you want to make a better fiat on-ramping service for people, go get your first money transmitter license somewhere and go start on-ramping people. You don't need all of them. You don't need every state. So it's like... If you uh, there are some things in the world that if you want to make it better, you got to do it yourself, and a lot of times it's wildly profitable to do it. So Coinbase made billions of dollars by just making an exchange, you know. So like FTX made billions of dollars by making an exchange. It seems like I, mean, I don't know if it's survivorship bias, and there's a whole ton of exchanges failing out there that I just haven't seen. But it seems to me like it's a pretty profitable business, and it doesn't. It seems like it has a lower failure rate than like normal cryptocurrencies. But most cryptos have a very, very high failure rate. I think uh, exchanges with licenses tend to have a lower failure rate just because there's more barrier to entry, so there's less competition. Could be wrong, you know. Like, it's hard for me to get a sample of how many failed exchanges are out there. Hey, can I ask you a question? Sure. Hey, Richard, how you doing? Um, didn't, you, didn't you leave the community for promoting a shit coin or something? What happened hell, with you, dude? Hell no, bro. Didn't you promote that coin that went fucking to zero every day? It just keeps no. going down every day? Which one? Zen. Didn't you promote the goes dude, only down Zen coin? That is great, bro. I've made crazy cool, awesome learning experiences with really low USD valuation, and I did it safely, taught everyone how to do it. And it right. was but where'd, where'd the money come from? I just you just, just wrecked the retail yeah, exchange guys. $200. So I you minted you minted a bunch of coins and dumped them on the retail exchange five. guys. I bought forty five grand worth of hex in the last four hundred days. Okay, so, so there's a general rule. If people but were just, to like, if people were to run scams and shit, and then put their like net profit into something good, like I consider hex good, then the next price would go up. But you if really people think launch that's a coins? Scam? You really think that's a scam? I think proof of botnet is a very bad idea. And I think proof of fuck everyone over on gas fees to spam up the network is a very bad idea. And I think like pre like, yeah, I think proof Can of you spam open that up? is a good idea. I want to learn. I need to learn. I'm a, I'm a pleb. Help me. Please help me. I've been, I love your work. I've listened to all your work, everything a hundred times. I've read your book a million times. I all just right. want to understand what you're thinking so I can maybe yeah. learn. Well, people come into the hex community. And they build uh, like a little brand, a little mini brand, and then they savage fuck them with a shit coin. So we've seen it with Axion, and we've seen it with Wise, and we've seen it with Rax, and we've seen it with all these fucking coins that go to zero and keep going to zero over and over again. And then the next piece of shit in line was Zen. But no one fucking learns. No one pays attention. They want to buy the thing that just keeps going to zero all the fucking time or gets rug pulled or both. I mean, we've seen every combination of rug pull. So if it does well, would you inflation bug. It? What if it does well? Or no. Let's say like, what would what you if, say if it what did if, really well for like a year or two in things? I'm just saying if that occurred for whatever fucking reason, why would you like, what would you say then? just be like, I didn't, I don't think it's efficient. So are you, are you telling me that? So you're really just right now, you saw a coin go negative 10,000 X and you're telling me like, what if it becomes a world reserve currency? Is that, the, is that the logical tactic free, you're using right brother. now? We minted it for literally a few dollars. No, you didn't. Okay. The fucking okay, money that well, went into the millions of dollars of inflated gas fees that everyone had to pay because of your proof of spam shitcoin experiment is a net personal. negative externality on everyone in the crypto space, including hexagons. Hexagons have to pay those raised fees because you idiots are doing proof of spam. So things like this won't exist, and the only reason they're bad is because they mess with hex. No, they fuck everyone over. 
I, you think I can't do malicious shit to attack networks too? I can, but I choose not to. Yeah, Proof but I don't of spam understand. is a bad I idea. I don't know enough like you do, so I want you to teach me. Anyway, I'm teaching you right now. Okay, Proof of spam is a, di- a bad idea. Okay? Come, come mint coins by blowing up the network's capacity is a bad idea. Get as many coins as you ask for by filling the network up with ask for coins transactions. Leaves no space for anyone else. And this shit just goes to zero anyway. It, it went negative 10,000 X negative. Can I ask you about Ethereum sensitivity to gas fees? Because it's so sensitive. It's like one of the craziest things I've noticed. You definitely know more than I do about that. Can you tell me about some, like, let's say five or 10 decent things get added to Ethereum over the next couple of years. How in God's name Pulse are scheme. we supposed to do anything? You have to, tr- you have to make, you have to have horizontal scaling until sharding exists where L2s get better adoption, which I haven't seen. You need horizontal scaling, which is a pulse chain does. It's like asking, how do we scale McDonald's? You fucking open another one across the street, and then people go to both of them. Brute force, copy-paste, horizontal scaling is how you get higher throughput. And then people can bridge if they need, or they can use centralized exchanges if they need. But at least you don't have fucking $40 to do a transaction on Uniswap, which is un- un- not okay. A Uniswap transaction shouldn't cost more than to send money by bank wire. So, and, the, and you're part of the problem with promoting something that makes the gas fees higher for no fucking reason. You're basically, you guys stole retail's money. That shit got listed on some exchanges. The people that minted it and ran the bot networks got to dump on all the fucking idiots that bought it at retail. And now they're down like a thousand X negative. Oops. It's disgusting. It's not good. And I've seen this shit so many times. I've seen so many scams targeted at hexagons and all they do is lose. Oh, what happened to hex money? Scam. Axiom scam, wise scam, all fucking scams, Rex scam, and tons of other scams that I've even fucking mentioned because I'm smart and don't expose my community to shit. You never even heard these words come out of my mouth except maybe a single digit number of times in the entire time I've been in crypto because I have to shield all you fucking idiots that are listening that have fucking addiction problems and gambling problems. They can't help but FOMO every new fucking thing that you see and you get the shit wrecked out of yourself. You can't just shut up and fucking wait. You can't delay gratification. You've got addiction problems. I have but, hex stakes, zero addiction problems, and I'm about, a, absolutely emotionally fit. So I don't, and I see things that you do that are completely out of line in emotional fitness terminology and completely different from what your book stated that you, you know, I read your book 10 times. Like, I loved you, it. It really Do helped. you think I'm talking about you specifically? No, well, I'm we, talking I, about I'm addiction just problems? Saying, like, we're not done. So, not so when we, dumbs, right. Man. But like, like, I'm a dumb no, dumb. I'm but a large dumb, portion. I'm wrecked. I used to have a trading channel and I shut it the fuck down because I didn't want to see people trading anymore because trading is the easiest way to lose your money in crypto. But you were or, too or good at it. You are too good at it. No, but even though I'm good at it, I don't What about it. you, Richard? Like how I know, I know that everyone else would lose their money trading. I'm asking you for real. Like I don't trade. I know you're a smart dude. I Could do not you trade on any price chart and just ruin it. Like if you were really a malicious person. I, I think that if you search deep in your consciousness, you can think of some bad shit I could do if I wanted to do it. <laughs> I'm an extremely nice person. I, no, I do I a lot of not bad understand stuff. understand that like, you are a good trader because you're really gifted. Let's be honest. And you're a little neurotic about the charts and you stay on top of it. But like, you yeah, but know I still don't trade people it. will not do shit and they will but lose it. I still it don't trade it. Because trading is still tough. I'd rather build products. I don't want to take someone else's fucking money from them that they don't want me to have it. Like... I want to build stuff that makes them their lives better. I want to make them happier. So look, I'm using you as an example. You're one of a long line of guys. There's been a long number of people that build up a hex following and then dumped a shit coin on them. And and like it's every time it happens, you see it on the hex price chart. You're like, oh, I guess someone's launching a new stupid fucking thing that some portion of people are gonna fall for, huh? Oh, uh, I guess the hex price has to get hurt now. And then all these people are gonna have their money stolen from them. Oh, great. That's great. Every time someone makes a buy at the top of Hex and they don't stake it, they're getting their money stolen from them. Every time someone goes into a liquidity pool, they don't understand. That's they're not getting true. their money stolen That's from, not from someone true. that knows more than them. That is not true. So many people bought tops in Hex, and this price is still higher. We've had You, you could have bought the top so many times days. and had more tops. I've been in for 500 days, and I've seen the same. Well, I'm at a zero. I'm, at, I'm zeroed out. Okay, and that's not and, horrible. And if, and if you held hex. Bitcoin, so you'd be, if you had Bitcoin, how many years of right? How many days would you be zeroed out in Bitcoin? Six years, five years. So you'd be down uh, sixteen hundred days. 
but the liquidity is like 50 times, 100 times, 300 times. Oh, because you need a lot of liquidity, right? Because you're a trillionaire. You need to market sell instantly a trillion dollars because you need the that liquidity, is that right? Big investors want to come in at some point. If someone serious wants to make a buy, they can't have 5, 10, 11% slippage. I have friends that have millions of dollars. Yeah. And that's why you use limit orders and don't pay any slippage. What you're saying is retarded. How do I teach them? <laughs> You 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 be the liquidity instead of pressing market sell. You press fucking limit order. I do liquidity you go into, I've taught everyone about Uniswap yeah. V3 more than anyone on the sure. internet over the last. So you have two months. options. You have two options for limit orders that aren't centralized exchanges, and I hate centralized exchanges. You can use a Uniswap V3 single-sided liquidity where you only put like let's say USDC on the bid and no hex on the ask, and after it gets filled, you pull it. If you don't pull it after it gets filled, it'll unfill if the price goes the other way. But you'll make fees both ways. And then uh, your other option is to use matcha.xyz or oneinch.io, and they have a zero net, zero x network interface that allows you to use limit orders that way. So you can either use Uniswap V3 single-sided liquidity to do limit order and have no slippage at all and put as many millions of dollars as you want with no fucking slippage. How do I or, teach them, Richard? I know this stuff. Well, dude, that's your job. I'm not in that. Is it it's my job, space. bro? Like, yeah. it, 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 you do it. Hey, Richard. Hey, man. Yo, guys, we have... Can I chime in here, man? Can I chime yeah. in? I was going to say we have other hands up, but guys... All right, I'm leaving, but I love you, Richard, and thank you so much hey, for everything you have done. It's my pleasure, dude. Yo, no more shit coins. Go. What's up? What's up, dude? How you doing? I'm all right. I, uh, I'm curious, man. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't really give a, a fuck, to be honest with you, about what, you know, that, that, that coin... We're kind of all here. Dude, anything that goes negative 10,000 X should eat a dick. Period. Yeah, dude. It's just, honestly, I don't even want to talk about that shit, man. I'm yep. just glad you started a fucking space, bro. And um, I got really two questions for you, man. What, uh, number one, in your opinion, what do you, what do you foresee? What do you think the next six years like for Sam and FTX? And then also, what do you think, uh, the second question would be, what do you think the market looks like up until like the next bull run? I mean, cause this is some of this shit is obviously it's, it's uh, for guys that have been through multiple cycles. It's not shocking. Uh, but for some of these people that are in the space now, it is shocking. And so like, um, I'm curious about your, your opinion on both of those things. I mean, so that dude, like apparently his ass like fled the country on a jet or something. So I don't know. Like, he was already in the Bahamas in the first place, apparently. So it seems like he right. was way straight here. That's more of like the not not really where he's at and all he's doing. What is the what what is the kind of like a textbook ramification of what he's looking at? I mean, this is like bigger than Bertie Madoff. You know what I'm saying? So. We don't know. We don't know the charges. We'll find out what the charges are. I mean, the thing is, like a lot of what he did might have been legal. You sign up for some guy's exchange and you just click the shrink wrap that says like you know. You have to rename your firstborn son to whatever he wants, and he can do whatever he wants with your stuff. Like you know, even, like people don't even read the the document. So who knows what was in the sign up terms of service? Sign up terms of service could have said he could do anything the fuck he wants, and then he didn't actually break any laws that I know of, right? Like it's you got to you got to get into the details. The devil's in the details. But when you give your money to a centralized exchange, it ain't your money no more. It's their money. You don't get that. You're an unsecured creditor. You don't have a UC one form. You're not a secured creditor. You're an unsecured creditor. You're getting co-mingled with everybody else. Your stuff's not held apart. So unless you know about bankruptcy law, it's it's kind of hard for people to understand these words I'm saying, right? Like, I'm a real business person. I understand real business. And people exactly. live in little why, homo NFT I'm lands, and they don't get anything. Yeah, that's why I kind of wanted to bring this shit up, dude, is because I mean, this, is, this is real life shit. So well, I'm, uh, I'm, you I'm know what bothers me? Yeah, I'll tell you what bothers me. I wish the fucking price would just go down and get it over with. And rip the band-aid Dude. off. But every <laughs> single one of these slow motion failure bullshits like like Gox, Gox is sort of Democles fucking hanging its death sword over the the price for like years and years and years and years. And I just don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm tired of Mount Gox and uh you know, these seizures from the US government. Just sell, sell, dump the price, get out. So we want to go back up now, right? Like get it over with. Dump the price, get it out. And we can all go back up. I, I hate this like delayed paralysis stuff, right? So like, okay, now instead of FTX just dumping all the coins and getting our 11k and pray fill, now it's like, well, not that you would fill on BTC because it's trash. I, I would never suggest anyone buy Bitcoin, but 
its days of sunshine have come to an end. It is limp gains forever now. Um, yeah, like when we're sitting here, like okay, FTX now has a uh, Chapter Eleven bankruptcy, and so now they have someone managing the coins in bankruptcy. <sighs> when do the coins get sold? When can we unwind all this bad debt and start going up again? When can we quit paying lawyers to all stare at each other and do nothing? Think about how much money the Mt. Gox trustees have been paid over the last decade. Why would they ever want to release the money? As soon as they release the money, they stop getting paid. So it's this tra like, it's not even a tragedy of the commons. It's a more perverse, negative tragedy in that trustees don't want to stop getting paid. So they dick around forever and never actually do the thing that's good for the people and make the creditors whole. And rip the bandaid off and get it over with. And everyone goes on with their life. They, they just stick us in this paralysis crap. I want a solid bottom. That, you know, I'm happy to tell everyone, like, I think the bottom's here. And it's very hard to get that when they keep adding these, like, oh, well, this will dump here and this will dump there. And interest rates are going up. And you're like, okay, can you just, can we make this easier? Can you reduce the variables from here, please? Can you just sell these coins that you say you're going to sell? Just sell them. Sell the coins. Sell, sell, sell. Get it over with. Let's go. Born, please, you know. That's just awesome, to, man. I'm gonna, just I'm to highlight, down, yeah, just to highlight, like we've got Silk Road coins that they just got like a billion dollars of those new ones from a new guy. <laughs> they got somebody that hacked the Silk Road and they got his billion dollars of coins. Lol. And then we've got the Phoenix hackers coins, and then we've got Ross Ulbricht's coins from the Silk Road, and then we've got the Gox coins. BTC price. <laughs> I don't think they got any Ethereum. I think that's all BTC pain, right? <laughs> and then they're like, Ethereum just has to get beat up because BTC got beat up. <laughs> Which kind of sucks because, like, you know, there was no Ethereum stolen in the Gox hack. There was no Ethereum stolen in the uh, Silk Road hack. But Ethereum is going to get beat up because Bitcoin is going to get beat up because Hart's Law, because they're bound by the liquidity in their trading pairs. I don't know. So, summary, not your keys, not your coins. I literally designed a product and gave it away for free that specifically addresses this problem and solves it. There's some, you know, you're not going to be able to get out of volatility risk. That's not something you can make go away. I think you can buy and make the price up. Someone can sell and make the price go down. Um, but you can't have more perfect, flawless operation. And everything else is failing all around us. And at some point, you're like, hey, guys, um, when are you going to buy the better thing? You know, stop buying stupid stuff. Buy the good thing. Any other questions? Hey, Richard. I uh, love you, man. Thank you for, for joining us. And, uh, yeah, it feels like every day you're being improved more and more, right? So thanks for all you do. Uh, my pleasure. My, uh, thank you. So my question is this. So now we got everybody with crypto in their in their bios saying, not your keys, not your crypto. But Good. inevitably in every conversation what comes up is, but, but is there a way for these, you know, we want, there's there's a class of people out there that want these regulated uh, central exchanges to work, and you know they're trying to find a way to to make them work. And what I'm realizing is that people fundamentally do not understand where the intrinsic value of crypto or many other assets, in fact, actually comes from. Like we were talking about that shit coin earlier. Well, guess what? That coin lost four times more was spent on fees for that coin than its total locked value, total value locked. So yep. what does that tell you? Negative right. externality, huge debt loss. It, it, and it inflates at infinity, so it's mathematically impossible for you to get any sort of gains from it ever, period, end of story. Yep. Another stupid so, coin comes and goes, victimizes the Hex community. Yay. And I think what would help is instead of telling people how to put liquidity in and all this other complicated shit that someone who who's, uh, you know doesn't understand that themselves really shouldn't be doing, how, how do we begin to convey this difference? Because here's what really happened with all these coins that people thought pumped. Like, I remember when Hex was kind of uh, making its uptrend and there was coins that were just popping off, 4X, 8X. I think people don't understand that, that those were all manipulated prices. Those coins never had that intrinsic value. That's why with one failure, and now you see this chain reaction happening, they're all going to fucking zero. They were all piggybacked off bad promises from each other. What, what I think I think say? it's funny that like one coin went down negative ten thousand x and hex went down negative twenty x. There's a big difference. <laughs> like yeah, it's we're twenty x back to all time high. Like you know, it's fucking. Uh, 
It's not a 10,000 X. It's a 20. And we've already done a 10,000. So I think 20 is pretty reasonable well, to well, do. And there's, a, and there's a big reason. There's a big difference with time frame. Like if that takes six months to do versus something that takes six hours, right? There's a, there's a big difference there. Um, is there anything that you could sort of tell us in terms of, um, you know, how crypto develops intrinsic value and uh, yeah, why some of these. Well, listen, are really I mean, yeah. the answer is going to be very unexciting to you but you have to put it into your head and stop seeing this narrative bullshit. It's because people buy and hold. That's the only thing the price chart cares about. It's the only thing the price cares about. Everything's a narrative meme. Buying and holding is the only thing the price cares about. Narrative memes are excuses people use to rationalize their buying and holding. So, it, so Bitcoin used to be peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. Oops, never happened. But it still went up a million, you know, 690 million percent. Uh, then it was going to be programmable money. And then whatever program is doing anything. Oops, oh well. Can you have it wake you up in the morning? Nope, can't even have it wake you up in the morning. Well, it doesn't sound very programmable. Uh, yeah, and then it still went up 690 million percent. And then it was like, uh, gonna, you know, Ethereum was going to be DAOs. Nope, that sucked. Oh, okay, then it was going to be unstoppable money. And then they had the, the, like, <laughs> the network split that made Ethereum classic Ethereum. And you're like, well, kind of stopped for one half of that split. And, and you're just like, the narrative keeps changing. The only thing that matters is buying and holding. That's why Hex is so beautiful. It just it, it rewards you to do the th only thing that the price chart cares about, buy and hold. The only, the only like truly successful investment strategy for things that have product market fit, buying and holding. And so like all this other stuff, like you said, it's a lot of rehab application. It's a lot of, you know, people fall for it, man. They're just like, oh, they're too big to fail. You're like, nope. They can fail very easily. Just need one guy with a gambling addiction, and uh, they'll fail right away. <laughs> that's it. By the oh. way, Richard, that was, that was a single piece of advice. I think that's helped me be the most successful and basically saved my ass a thousand times over. Uh, that you buy and don't sell. And what I believe is happening with a lot of these quote-unquote regulated uh, exchanges is that they cast attention away from themselves. And then what they do is they they – they um they basically put that hold cycle like so you want to buy and hold that's where an intrinsic value is developed but they shortcut that part right and that's why it always inflates into this bubble so that that was by no means boring man thank you so much for for that response. my pleasure man that's yeah, a man, great question you. thank you so i'm gonna take one more question i'm gonna head off and you guys can enjoy the free for all of not being shilled stuff that sucks in other rooms Hey, Richard, what's going on, man? Thanks for opening up the space. Pleasure. Um, I, th I think we all agree on one of the, the big aspects of being in crypto is, you know, getting out of legacy finance, getting out of the, the legacy bank system as much as we can. And obviously we see, you know, issues with that every day. Um, fast forwarding a little bit, you know, let's try to get to the end game here a little bit. One day we're going to want to, you know, buy a big house and buy some things and, and try to take some of this crypto money back into the real world, per se. Have you thought about any way to, and I, I've been trying to figure this out a little bit, and I stumbled on a, a way to maybe do it, but, um, you know, staying in the crypto world, but being able to pay our bills and, and being able to not plug into the Visa MasterCard system and the legacy banking system, but, you know, like the end game and all this. Have, have you have you given I that? I mean, it's so far away, it doesn't matter, dude. Like, you got to do so many other things before that. It's, it's, okay, would you rather have a working crypto payments network or mad gains? I'd rather have mad gains. Okay. Oh, mad gains, 100%. Right. Like, it's, it's like, it, Visa works okay. People, people don't understand the value in Visa. Being able to charge back stuff is worth a lot. And if you buy stuff on crypto and you can't charge it back, the first time you get screwed, you're going to be, wait a second. I wish I used my credit card. This sucks. I have no counterpart. No, I have no protection. And then you're like, okay, well, you know what? I'll, we'll use escrow. And then all those companies went out of business. And so you don't have the option to use escrow. And so like, let's say you wanted to buy a car at a distance with crypto. You wouldn't be able to. You would be terrified to send the crypto before the car arrived. And the guy would be terrified to send the car before the crypto arrived. And so you need a middle party to like facilitate that transaction to make it work better. And that's what Visa, MasterCard, and American Express do. They, they let you complain and get your money back if someone sucks. And it's really, really valuable. And it's probably worth more than the 2 or 3% you're paying. 
But then people look at crypto and they're like, oh, well, crypto can solve this. Crypto can solve part of it. Right. It can, it can, it can, there is a place for irreversible payments, but there's a place for disputable payments, a big place, a huge place. Because merchants will just screw you <laughs> to take your crypto and not give you what they said they would. So, you know, it's not, it's not as inefficient to market as people think it is. Now, it's extremely inefficient for censorship resistance. So if, if you need censorship resistance, it's amazing. If you need privacy, it's amazing. If you need anonymity, it's amazing. But if you are just doing normal transactions and buying like, uh, you know, a book or something, you will probably want that chargeback protection because when it doesn't arrive, what are you going to do? The guy says he shipped it. He has a tracking number. He says he shipped it. You didn't get it. Now what? Well, I guess you're screwed. You don't have your money. It sucks. Credit card solves that. Crypto does not. And if you try to involve one of, if there wasn't, an, if there still was any escrow companies left, they would charge you more um, than what the credit card would to solve that problem for you. Gotcha. That, that's a great point, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. My pleasure, man. But like, in hey, the Richard, end game, I don't we, can, we can make progress on it, but it's like, let's bring back the bull around and the mad gains first, and then we could worry about replacing Visa. Right, for sure, for sure. Okay, thank you. Pleasure, man. Hey, Richard, I don't want to keep it too long. I did want to ask something. Uh, you do so much to help everyone else. Is there any way that we, the people who support you and want to follow you and help you out, is there any way that we would know if you weren't emotionally okay, if there's anyone that could reach out for you? Just is there any way that anyone would know? I'm doing great. I mean, okay. it's like I have, I've spent so many years of my life waiting for devs that I'm just used to it. So, like, there's nothing I can do about it. And I was, you know, right about price. I was right about uh, custody. My coin has been doing extremely well. Like, I mean, if I were to tell you the coin that went up 10,000x dropped basically the same amount that Ethereum did, you'd be like, damn, that's pretty good. You're like, yeah, Ethereum dropped 85. We dropped 95. What's the big deal? Sounds awesome. <laughs> like, it's great. But they went up 60x and we went up 10,000x. So, and the other thing is like, if, if you could get the world's best performing asset and you can get it at a bigger discount, you win twice. You're like, yay, I get more of the awesome thing for even less. That's great. Than buying weaker gain stuff for like more, you know? So, yeah. And I, you know, I just have, I'm doing IRL things. I'm building a museum and it takes time. And so like, I haven't been able to like do live streams from the throne. So, uh, but like, what am I going to talk about? Okay. Yes. I was right about everything as I have been for years now. I pat myself on the back some more and we wait for our price targets and we wait for pulse chain to launch. And I don't have much else to say. It's like, yep. Richard Hart here again. It's called the top on the day. World's biggest diamond. 10,000 X coin flawless operation for a thousand days, about half the age of Ethereum now. And, uh, you know, like follow subscribe, but I don't really, I don't know, man. Like when you're doing IRL stuff, you just get out of the habit of like just popping up on a live stream. And cause like, look right now, like I've run out of stuff to say and the, you know, it's like, I already said it. <laughs> I've been saying it for half a decade and the people that listened were saved and the people that didn't were doomed and cry on live stream now. And cry, cry, cry. But they forget about their referral links to FTX. They forget about the referral links to Celsius. They forget about the referral links to BlockFi. They forget about all that sweet, juicy money they got by feeding you into a fucking meat grinder. And that's the reason they don't like me. Because I show them what they really are. They're pieces of shit. The, the crypto media, by and large, are pieces of shit to feed you into the meat grinder and then pretend that they're victims when you get ground up. Oh, oh, we didn't know. We, we didn't know it would happen. It just happened to the eight identical companies earlier. <laughs> Oops. It's disgusting, dude. It's gross as shit. Hey, Richard. Um, I, I think that um, the bear market was probably one of the best things that, that could have happened because it did show uh, the whole community and crypto um, how right you were for such a long time. So that's kind of like a, a silver lining with this bear market. So yeah, I appreciate that. Like, I don't know, maybe 6,000 new followers, maybe something yeah. like that. Yeah. Every and, bit helps, dude. I can't save these people if they don't hear my words. I hear you, man. Um, 
So I, I do have one question for you. We, we've got some people in this chat and we've got people from the Ethereum side and maybe other places that are kind of not doing too well. Um, what types of things would you like to see built as the founder of Pulse Chain? What types of things would you like to see built on Pulse Chain to, to well, just make it thing. well-rounded? Yeah. Here's the funny thing, right? <laughs> I almost don't give a shit if anyone builds on Pulse Chain. Because why do I need that? We got all the tickers. We got all the trading. It's the same fucking code. So do we need more? You want you want to trade link? Cool. We got link. You, same code. Same ticker. You, you want to trade uh, Ethereum? Cool. We got Ethereum. We got bridged in Ethereum. And we got fucking, uh, you know, Pulse Chain that you got for free. So, like, why do I care if someone launches 20 more shit coins and tries to, like, suck all the liquidity? Like, it just... This, this... Do you see Vitalik shilling ERC-20s? No, you do not. Okay. Why? Because he doesn't fucking own any ERC-20s, so he doesn't give a fuck whether the price goes up or not. And does Ethereum do very well? Yes, Ethereum does very well. And and so it's like it's just it's like what I was talking about. Like if people go out there and scam and then take their winnings from scamming and put it in hex, hex goes up. But if people go out there and scam and take their winnings and put it into fucking dollars and go buy Lambos, then just all the prices go down. So like it, it matters this whole like make a bunch of shit coins and then think it makes the world better, by and large, I do not believe that it does. I, I care about anonymity, privacy barely care about throughput it's okay um i care about transaction fees and i care most about mad gains and when you spread your your price energy across 10 different tickers guess what motherfucker they all can't go up you, you have x now of money unless you do this rehab hypothecation reflexivity shit which is what they've been doing and then like you buy one coin and then it puts its money to another coin and then it puts its money to another coin and then when they fail they like domino down cascade fail None of my stuff does that shit. We don't have like inflation bugs on the way down like Luna had. We just have standard, you know, slow, normal inflation. So we don't get negative 10,000 X shit. You know, we get normal crypto shit. So it's like, basically the premise of your question is like, we want to launch more coins. Please sell us coins, please. And I'm like, no, don't launch any more fucking coins. Go, go spread the good word about the coins that we've got. You know, I guess I... But if you were in the Ethereum space, I wouldn't mind seeing some type of uh, tornado coin replacement. I, I don't really know what people are using for tornado coin replacement right now. I'd be happy to hear. Appreciate it. Tornado, cash. tornado cash is a wildly useful protocol. You want to buy a house? Okay, well, I guess uh, everyone's going to know everyone you've ever done business with before. And You want to buy a cheeseburger? I guess they're going to have to know your net worth now. Oh, you want to pay an employee? I guess I guess everyone's going to know how much money you have and what all the other employees get paid. It's not okay. Like you can't have capitalism without privacy, and you can't have privacy without mixing and public blockchains. So, I mean, I guess you could call zk snarks not mixing, unless you consider the anonymity set kind of like pseudo mixing or something. But so I, I think the biggest problem in Ethereum right now is just it needs better anonymity tools because I believe the government did something a little a little not good there. I think I think preemptively fucking everybody over is the opposite of what a government should do. Like, oh we were here to protect you by breaking this really useful thing. Oh, um, well I don't feel very protected. I feel like I got fucked. What's up? You know? Yeah, I've not vetted it, but I've heard that the M87 is a one-to-one -one fork of Tornado Cash that some people are using. All right, I'll Google it. Appreciate the heads up, bro. Yeah. Hey, Richard. I just yep. wanted to jump in quickly and say thank you, man. My um, pleasure, bro. Everything you do, awesome. I uh, really benefited from all the education you've put out there, the videos. I haven't watched all your stuff, but... Um, you repeat a lot of very useful information enough that, uh, I think I've caught most of the baseline facts and I know I've personally benefited from it as I'm not totally broke, although I still need in <laughs> with a couple other things. I'm sorry. I'm not a 100% maximalist. 
<laughs> you are the god of crypto. I know I won't get a follow because I go play with KG. Oh well, but uh, I, I I unfollow everybody. Like I don't give a fuck who you are. Yeah. If I see you promote cool. some shit that's not RH thing, I just unfollow you. It cool. always goes the same way, dude. You you will get wrecked. And then you'll come back, and you'll and you'll be like, it, it's, "I've seen this show a hundred times." I never times, left. Dude. I never left. Like I'm holding big hex bags. Well, as much as my poor club butt can. But anyways, I, you know what? I, I bet you SBF's holding hex bags too. But it doesn't mean he's a good guy, you know. Well, I'm not SBF. But on that note, this does lead <laughs> into the question that I actually had. Um, so. Really, since I have a chance to pick your brain here, something that I'm wondering if I should even spend the time to get out of bed and look into this is uh, BitBoy got all riled up and there was plenty of meme videos about it because of SBF's um, stupid uh, anti-DeFi lobbying, basically, with Congress. Scumbag, lobby- motherfucking. Yeah. The DeFi and would save his it- users from him. Yeah, and as soon as that, uh, as soon as this crap went down with uh, FTX exploding, there was rumor no. that, okay, the bill squashed. But then I heard another no. rumor that Congress was going to go forward with it. So I wanted to pick your brain what you thought about that. I would look forward to one day a government making things better instead of worse. I, I really, I can't remember it happening any time in my lifetime, basically. But uh, I dream, the dream of the government making something better once. I haven't seen it yet, I don't think. Uh, they're carrying it forward to save face. He made them look like a bunch of shitheads. I really hope that they fuck off. The whole reason crypto exists is because the government's not good at shit. The government's not good at money, so we had to make our own money. If they weren't so bad at it, we wouldn't have had to make our own. But they're terrible at it. You've never had less choice in banks. You've never had less choice in currencies. You've never had less choice in fucking everything. Like, you've never had less choice in your internet service provider. It all sucks. Like, they're, the governments are not doing their job to help capitalism thrive and, and foster competition. Capitalism does not thrive without competition. And the government is failing terribly at, uh, at helping competition happen. So, like, why are there so few exchanges? Government laws. Why, is, why are people losing so much money? Government laws. They're just bad. Like, <laughs> they suck. What, oh, by the way, like, what, where were all of FTX's customers? Mostly out of the United States because they, they weren't they were in the Bahamas and didn't allow you to KYC with U.S. based uh, stuff, right? So, like, you had to sign up on a different site, FTX US, if you were a U.S. person. So, like, I'm not an expert on their shit because I was never stupid enough to open a fucking account there, like so many other people were. <laughs> I just keep winning all the time. It's like hilarious. <laughs> Everyone else is getting the shit wrecked out of them. And you're like, yeah, well, you should have listened to me. You could have sold the top. And by the way, like, Hex, oh no, we, we dipped, Ethereum dipped 85, we dipped 95, but Arch has been paying 40% yield the whole time, on average. You're like, oh, well, I guess that canceled out a lot of dip, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, sure did. People don't, like, pay attention, you know? This might be like the stupidest idea ever, but one thing I've always kind of thought would be nice to see would be a fiat on and off ramp that wrapped around Uniswap and pretended to be a centralized exchange yep. using multisig. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a fabulous idea. And if I were to make an exchange, it would probably look just like that. So I, t- I too have had that thought. Because you just you're like, oh well, you don't need the private, you don't need to license some private labeled trade engine when you can just use Uniswap. <laughs> it's just there, you know. So like, but I mean, gas fees, dude. You know, that's the problem with that one. This was a better idea back when gas was like cent pennies instead of fifty bucks. I don't know what it is to right now. Maybe it's twenty bucks to do Uniswap swap now. If I had to ballpark it. But you're thinking along the right lines. You know, minimize attack surface, use tried and true, audited software, minimize counterparty risk. Like, it's it's definitely along the right lines. Maybe Pulse Chain. You, with lower fees on Pulse Chain, you could like do that business idea a lot easier, and you wouldn't fail to like the gas fee problem. Not until we have enough users to drive gas fees up. Yeah, the the gas fees is a complicated thing. The only idea I ever had on solving that would definitely be use Pulse Chain and. 
you know, maybe you have some subpar. I mean, the church, the church of this is one of you guys needs to start fiat on ramping someone in a single state and see what happens. You know, get your license, do it, hope it scales. You can make a lot of money on it. People, people would pay, you know, a per, you know, a large number of percent. I mean, the ATMs, they pay 10%. So if you're, if you're charging less than 10, they'd probably be happy to deal with you. My guess. We, we need Fiat on ramps. We need them. I mean, like, otherwise they're just going to send their money to someone that doesn't do it as well. Like a lot of people send money to FTX, right? You could have been part of that solution because they sent their money to you and cashed out and already got their actual crypto. Then they didn't have any more risk and, and they got what they wanted instead of leaving it there and getting tempted to margin trade it. That's why I used to send people to stamp because they didn't have margin trading, you know? Because I don't want to see people getting destroyed. Like margin trading is how you can lose all your money the quickest. Normal trading is how you could lose it a little bit slower. <laughs> You're still going to lose all your money, but just slower. With margin trading, you lose your money super quick. Hey Richard, I just want to say thank you for everything and uh, answering my question. I'm going to step down so others can come up. My with pleasure, something. man. As much as you tried to get out of here, I think you're going to be. I'm going to peace out too. Answering questions. I'm, I'm going to rock out too, dude. I've had fun, guys, and I really hope that uh, this bear market comes to an end soon. I, I wish everyone would just sell all these coins that they've hacked, seized, and otherwise whatever, so we could get a nice clean bottom. You know, rip the bandaid off, remove their ability to hurt the price later, let them sell lower now, and. Uh, Go back up, and then you know if we could peel these mandates off. I got to tell you, man, that uh, that spread on grayscale right now at like negative forty something percent is like <laughs> pretty brutal. And and you feel sorry for everyone that bought it at negative twenty and thought they were getting a deal. They're like, oh, ten percent off, what a deal! And then it went to negative twenty, and the, the price of Bitcoin went down. And then it went to negative thirty, and the price of Bitcoin went down. And then it went to negative forty, and the price of Bitcoin went down. And you're like, yo, did you guys realize that it could just like an oscillating indicator just stick down and stay down and get worse and worse and worse? Because I told you, I told you that could happen, and it did. And the people that listened were saved. And the people that didn't were wrecked. I hope you know. All I have to show for being right all the time is nearly infinite wealth. Damn it. Life's not fair. <laughs> JK and nearly infinite. The number is a little too high, but I still I'm in this for glory, man. I'm not it I'm not in it for the numbers. I'm in it for the glory. And uh when I talk to hexagons, I get it. And when I talk to dum dums, I feel like I don't get it, you know? Like there's a lot of dum dums out there that just don't why why do they have money on exchanges in a bear market of all times? Like when do you think the exchanges are most likely to fail during the bear? So put so much stress on them. Someone literally cried this week because you personally have made money. Yeah, I thought it was hilarious. I was like, oh, the guy that promoted, uh, you know, bad things is crying. <laughs> what an idiot. It's like, hey, buddy, I've been in crypto long before you got here, and I'll be long after you leave. Keep crying, though. I got this Prada nylon to keep the tears rolling off. Rich, that's why you don't have as many followers as those idiots with the millions because they're idiots that are following it's crazy them, you know? it, it, it's, yeah, but it's the smarter there's less of us smart people that is why yeah. you have less followers that's simple it's as that. wild don't it's even wild like, to me like but elon hops out. on the space and he's like doge to the moon but well everyone just got all their life savings yeah. lost he just yelled doge to the moon you're like bro um, those guys it's smart, the they get stupider. that's the balance you're like bro your coin sucks man it's trash like it, you change the logo so stupid. I do, I do have a medium IQ question. If you got Go. another minute, Go ahead. So yeah, thanks for everything. You know, pleasure. I know you say that we did it, but thanks. You know, my pleasure. Another man. quick note: no comment needed. Watch people's actions, not their words. If they say over True. and over again that they want to learn from you, and then they won't shut the hell up for three seconds, they don't really no, care I hear what you think. Yeah, that's true. Um, I know, man. So when it came to when it came to the to the PAL forks, um, the USDC pairs got absolutely emptied by people that bought like ten bucks worth of worth of the forked hex and then emptied millions of forked USDC out and then drained the hex pairs. Do you think that's gonna? Do you think that's a threat for the for the? Pulse I actually forks? haven't. I haven't analyzed the game theory and what happened on that. Like on that other chain. So I'm not qualified to actually speak to it, to tell the truth. I haven't looked at it. 
No, I got you. Just something to yeah. think about. They um, because well, the I mean, AMMs like, but that's why care. we have an automated market maker price fixer bot go through and change a lot of stuff. Like, I don't, but I don't know how much that it would affect that particular calculus. Yeah, I mean, was, I think I, okay. So, like, basically, you, <laughs> on a chain, I think what's most likely to have value is the thing that has users. And then because we're real DeFi and real decentralization, if there's forks of Ethereum, Hex does probably well on them better than other things because it actually works. And so you would see people want to probably acquire Hex over other things on that chain just because the other things might not work at all. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, the the, the exploit is when, because the AMM doesn't know that the stable has gone to, is trending to zero, it will allow people to cram millions of worthless stables into the like the copied USDC pulse pair, for example, and then pop pop out. But that's just of USDC. right, but that's just a pro, like that's a that's a liquidity provider problem. So if you if you as a liquidity provider have mispriced where you have set your liquidity, then you will be arbitraged out. And so if at right. the moment of the fork you're playing a pair where one half of that pair went to zero, well, first of all. Why are you holding half of your LP in something that just went to zero? That sounds like a bad play on your part. Yeah, well, the exploit path would be like hold well, it's not an exploit. A whole bunch. It's not an exploit. Well, it's just a strict arb right. play. So, so yeah, like was... the, all the software is doing what it's supposed to do. It's not an exploit. It's just that there's one of the coins has basically gone to zero, and the LPs were so stupid that they held it. So, if you're an LP and a fork happens, and you're willing to hold half of the value of your LP in something that's going to go to zero. That seems like a bad play for you, the LP. And the only way for that to get fixed is for someone to come and arb it. And the arb is the person that actually makes the price right by basically jacking the LP. But there's no other way to fix that other than have a smarter LP pre-fork. There's no, like, because the thing that you're describing as an exploit is the price actually fixing itself and becoming real. So you're, you're misinterpreting... You're, you're misinterpreting the price turning to the real price as an exploit. But that's the real price because it's paired with something that's worth nothing. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's a little unique on Pulse X, potentially because everything's going to be repriced potentially before launch. My, yeah, my I mean, the was... other fork had huge problems in that you just couldn't bridge or trade or anything. So, like, <laughs> if you can't trade or bridge, it's really hard to find utility. And, like, a, it would be similarly, it would be as useful as our testnet, pretty much. So, like, what's the di like a, a fork of Ethereum with no bridge and no liquidity is basically our testnet. So, like, yep. and, and it shouldn't really have it, our testnet doesn't have economic value. So, I don't yeah, know why really there would. It really is like testnet plus over there, like slightly more value. My right. thought was somebody could hold, you know, shitcoin A that Texicans aren't paying attention to. The liquidity gets repriced into Pulse X. They buy out a whole bunch of Pulse or a whole bunch of that coin, and then and then um, they use that Pulse cheap Pulse then to drain out uh, Hex from the. From I mean, Hex pulse I mean, there. the solution to this is for just everyone to pull all their LP before the fork. I don't know. Like, I mean, if you if you're worried about getting weird arbed after the fork, then pull your LP right before the fork and put it back right after, and then you shouldn't have any weird exposure. Is an LP? That makes sense. Yeah, I'll hey. quit. I'll quit yammering on it. Thank you. Uh, Rich, my pleasure, man. Hey, so. hey, Richard. Hat. Before you leave, please. Um, I'm here with my family, and we have a message for you. Come on, guys. Thank, Thank you, you, Richard. Hat. Thank nice. you very much. We love you, and uh, thank you, man. For your education um, and inspiration. Are you guys Jamaican? You sound like some Jamaican oh, folks. Oh, I'm Nigerian, but I'm um, Nigerian. I'm All right. Texas. Um, I'm a United Army veteran. Nice, man. Well, you thank sound you like you have much. a real nice family, and I really appreciate those kind of words. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. you thank you, man. Inspirational to all of us. They all know you, and we are all in the whole. We, the whole family is in Pulse Chain, Pulse X, and Hex, and we want to say thank you for everything you've done. Especially my pleasure, man. For the education. Thank you so much. You brightened my day. Thank you. Hey, Guys, great. I'm heading off. You've been amazing. I wish you the maddest of gains. I hope that uh, they stop raising interest rates and everyone dumps the bottom and all these scumbag uh, people just like <laughs> sell the bottom and then we can have, you know, 
nice run up without having to worry about them dumping it later, you know? That's the dream. That's anyway what I'm kind of looking for. It's easy, you know, when you call the top of the day, it's a little bit easier to handle uh, a bear market. But uh, for people that uh, DCA'd DC'd in to all time highs, you're like, well, it's a little bit harder. You got to wait a little bit longer, you know? You got to take an extra cycle to, to get those med gains. Good questions, guys. Keep up the good work and stay on message, you know? Don't, uh, don't stay fall off, for brother. the boredom. Don't fall stay for off. the boredom of making bad plays during a bear when you could just wait for the bull and everything will be a lot nicer. Keep buying hex, baby. Talk to you later, guys. Now, I'm going to, do I just end this like task so that the room stays alive? Is that the best if, strategy if for close, this? If you close basically what happens, if you, close, you, it's you close the thing, it's, it's done. But, if, well, I'm going to leave it alive, but I'm just going to like close my app so that you guys can run without me. I think I'm going to like end the task on the phone, you know? No, if you end that, it'll you shut end it off. The, if you end, it'll shut it off. But it's okay. So, we how do I, so there's no way for this thing to live? It doesn't no. survive? Well, basically, we run, we run it 24 7, but it's just no one knows that we actually do it. But we actually have a space that, that's concentrated towards the your ecosystem. But Okay, yeah. well, why don't you go show that thing real quick and maybe some people will hop over there? Um, well, everyone can follow me or the uh, Hex All Day at Hex All Day. It's basically like uh, an account that phone that just runs it all day. But uh, okay. thanks, Richard. Thank I'll you, man. All right. So you want me to click end instead of ending task? Yeah, you could just end it for now. We'll just restart. All right, guys. There's no hope. <laughs> See you later, everybody. Ciao. Have a good one, man. Stay safe. See you, Richard. Later.